Second certification down, I passed the Palo Alto Network Cybersecurity Practitioner Certification. And with that, I am 25% of the way done with my journey to take all of the new Palo Alto Network's role-based certifications. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what the certification is, what it covered, how I prepared, and how the exam went. Let's begin. I like to think of the Cybersecurity Practitioner Certification as kind of a welcome to Palo Alto Networks certification in the sense that you're going to learn all the different pieces of the Palo Alto Networks portfolio and how they can help you combat threats in your environment, how they can integrate with your environment, how kind of they work, at least at a high level, more from like architecture, less from actually implementing them in depth, and also just the different pieces of the Palo Alto Networks portfolio. Uh, according to Palo Alto Networks, this certification is for understanding the basic application of the Palo Alto Networks portfolio. And so with that, I really do think that the best way to think of it is welcome to Palo Alto Networks and here's what we have to offer. And so that's what you'll learn by doing this certification. The Cybersecurity Practitioner Certification is divided up into five sections, Cybersecurity, Network Security, Cloud Security, Endpoint Security, and Security Operations. If you watched my last video on the Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification, you'll notice that those are almost exactly the same. The only difference actually is that the Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification also had a networking fundamentals section. Really, this just focuses on security, not as much on networking. However, the important difference here is that within these sections, you're going to have to actually understand how Palo Alto Networks products implement those specific security capabilities. For example, for the Cybersecurity Apprentice certification, it's important to know why uh, files can be dangerous and what types of files can be dangerous to your environment and how malware works, what malware is, what's the difference between something like a Trojan horse or a virus, what those definitions are, and what types of risks they can present to your environment. But in this certification, you're going to need to know how something like wildfire or file blocking can help protect you from that specific threat. You don't need to know how to implement it. You don't need to know how to go into a firewall or into Prisma SASE and actually configure wildfire, for example, but you need to know generally what wildfire is. Um, I'm not saying that that was an exam question, but just as kind of a general example, that's something that you should know, and that's the level of knowledge that you need to have in order to do well in this certification. As with the Cybersecurity Apprentice Certification, I was very confident in my knowledge of these topics. I took a look at the data sheet and saw that I already knew pretty much everything that was going to be covered in this specific certification. In my job as a solutions consultant, I'm expected to understand these specific topics and be able to help customers understand exactly how Palo Alto Network solutions can help them solve their security problems, which as I mentioned before, is exactly what this certification measures. So I didn't do too much preparation. One thing I did review is if you look in the data sheet, it does say to know the difference between MITRE tactics and techniques. I hadn't uh, looked at the MITRE attack framework in a little while, so I did just open that up and I did just review the different tactics and techniques in the MITRE attack framework. Um, so that, that was something I did to prepare a little bit for the exam. I took the exam at a Pearson View Testing Center at the Florida State College Jacksonville in Deerwood. That's one of my favorite places to take this exam. They have a really nice facility there and it's relatively close to where I live. So that's uh, pretty helpful just as far as convenience. And again, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but I personally really prefer to take Pearson View exams in person. I'm not a huge fan of trying to do them on my own computer at home. So I took the exam, uh, the check-in process was pretty seamless there. Um, they're also professionals. They actually asked me, they, they said they'd never heard of this exam. Um, I don't think they'd really ever heard of Palo Alto Networks. A lot of people who go there, they're taking all different types of exams, but I think there's certain exams that people are more likely to take. Maybe something like the GRE or something is a lot more common there versus an exam like this, which is pretty niche just for people like me who are learning the Palo Alto Networks portfolio, not for you know everyone who wants to go to grad school. Anyway, uh, I actually went and took the exam itself. I struggled a lot more 
kind of reading and, and understanding the questions than I did with the cybersecurity apprentice exam. If you remember in that video, I said that I thought that those questions were very straightforward. I think these ones in the cybersecurity practitioner were more of the typical Palo Alto Networks type questions that really make you think. And sometimes the, the wording is a little bit convoluted, Re really just forces you to kind of think and think what's, what's the best answer here. It wasn't necessarily as straightforward as this one's definitely the right answer and the rest are wrong. So you definitely had to think what is the best answer. Because of that, I did take almost an hour. I also was, I will say, a little bit more tired. When I took it previously in Pinellas, I think I had a little bit more energy, came to the test just a little more like refreshed and awake. That also is part of the reason why I did it so quickly there. Uh, I think that one I did like in 20 minutes. This one I did almost took an hour. I had 90 minutes, so it was, you know, was really good on time, but um, you know, just, just needed a little bit of extra time because I was tired. And I think the questions were also a little bit more challenging after I completed the exam. I did see that I, I had my provisional pass, which was great. Um, one thing I noticed, uh, a couple things. One is we get these provisional passes. Now it looks like a lot of people have been talking about this on Reddit. So I guess this is just what Pearson view is doing now. They're just going to give you a provisional provisional pass. You're never actually going to get a sheet that says pass. You're just going to know that you've passed once you receive that certification in Credly. Um, so just, just something to think about. When you get this, you're just going to get that provisional pass. Don't worry about it. Just wait. Eventually, you'll get that certification in Credly. Another thing is um, something that's a little bit disappointing, to be honest, is that in the past, you would usually get like kind of a score breakdown per section. And I thought that that was really helpful. It looks like they're not doing that anymore. They're just going to tell you that, you know, whether you passed or not. So honestly, that's a little bit disappointing, but I did get that provisional pass. What was funny was my computer actually had kind of an error at the end. It turned out that it was a, a backend error on Pearson view. So there was a little bit of confusion with the moderators and they were trying to figure out what was going on. I wasn't actually able to take the end of test survey, but Pearson view said it wasn't an issue. They said that they had some error on the back end, and they had received um, my, my exam submission and that, I, that I'd passed and I would just get everything digitally. So I didn't actually get the, the printout, even though I was able to see that I had the provisional pass. And of course, I'm able to see it online on my Pearson view account. So a little bit of an adventure there, but I was able to pass the exam. And if it was a little bit harder than the cybersecurity apprentice exam. Um, but but it was it was it was pretty good. And I managed to pass. As I said earlier in this video, the certification really is like welcome to Palo Alto networks. What do we have to offer? How does the portfolio work? How does the platform work? What are the different parts of the platform? How do they integrate into your environment? What benefits do they bring you? How do they help stop threats? How do they help secure your environment? And therefore, really this certification is gonna be best for people who need to understand at a high level, how do security products, Palo Alto network security products, but even non Palo Alto network security products work? How does something like cloud security posture management work? Um, in your environment. Of course, what you're also going to learn what Palo Alto Networks product provides that. You're going to learn what benefit that brings you, what types of threats that can prevent, how that can help with compliance. That's just one example, right? So that's something that you would learn preparing for this certification exam. One job role that would benefit a lot from this is something like a consultant. So if you're a consultant like me at Palo Alto Networks, or at a Palo Alto Networks partner, at a managed service provider, you're generally gonna understand, okay, this is what this product does. This is what it does for this customer. This is how it can help them solve these problems. And so when the customer is talking about a specific use case, that's when you can bring up that specific product and how it will solve their problem. If you are on the customer side, if you're actually doing implementation for your organization, you're actually a cybersecurity engineer for your organization, then this certification would be more useful for a general architectural level understanding, again, of Palo Alto Networks products, but also uh, similar products in the industry. So if you are um, either a consultant or an architect, this will just really help you get a general picture of cybersecurity architecture of how products in the industry can work together and specifically how Palo Alto Networks products can work together to help you uh, stop threats, meet your specific use cases, and integrate into your environment. I hope that's helpful. I hope that you've learned something from this video about this specific certification. I will next be taking the Palo Alto Networks um, 
what is it, the Network Security Generalist certification. So I started with the Cybersecurity Apprentice, if you remember. Now I did Cybersecurity Practitioner, kind of getting a little bit more. So going from just general cybersecurity to now a little bit of architecture. And now we're just going to keep getting more and more in depth. The next one will be Network Security Generalist, which is really going to start to focus more on network security and network security products that Palo Alto Networks has. So that will be my next certification as I continue on this path. And um, I hope you join me for that video. Thank you.